Patients with esophageal and oropharyngeal malignancies commonly present in a catabolic state secondary to dysphagia, odinophagia, or oropharyngeal obstruction. As the gastrointestinal tract remains functional, enteral feeding is the preferred route of nutritional support. Percutaneous endoscopic gastrostomy, PEG, has superseded nasogastric tube placement and surgical gastrostomy as the commonest method of providing long-term enteral feeding. PEG tube insertion was introduced in 1980 by Gaudara et al. and is accepted as the method of choice for enteral nutrition. Some of the many reasons include the minimally invasive approach, the speed and relative ease of insertion, good tolerance and acceptance by patients, as well as the longevity of the tube, thus avoiding the need for replacement. In addition, it's also used for prophylaxis of malnutrition during chemoradiotherapy. Different techniques of PEG placement have been reported, the most widely used being the pull-through method. This method uses a catheter with a secure plate at its end, which is pulled through the upper digestive tract and the gastric and abdominal walls to the outside. However, this method allows the secure plate to come into contact with the primary tumor and superficial tumor cells. Case reports and retrospective analysis describe metastases at the PEG insertion site of the abdominal wall, but there appears to be no prospective study available to confirm this. Since the availability of modern treatment options with intention to cure and improved survival rates, possible late PEG complications have become more significant. In the study entitled Prospective Evaluation of Malignant Cell Seeding after Percutaneous Endoscopic Gastrostomy in Patients with Oropharyngeal Esophageal Cancers, Elrichman et al. systematically quantify the rate of malignant cell seeding at the abdominal wall pull-through site and to evaluate possible risk factors. Their findings are reported in the July issue of Endoscopy. Here is a summary of the study. Background and study aims. Insertion of a percutaneous endoscopic gastrostomy, PEG, is standard care for many patients with oropharyngeal and esophageal malignancies in order to ensure enteral feeding. The current pull-through insertion technique involves direct contact with the tumor and case reports have demonstrated the presence of metastases at insertion sites. The aim of the current study was to prospectively evaluate the risk of malignant cell seeding and the development of abdominal wall metastases after PEG placement. Patients and methods. A total of 50 consecutive patients with oropharyngeal esophageal tumors were included. After PEG placement, 40 pull-through technique, 10 direct insertion, brush cytology was taken from the PEG tubing and the transcutaneous incision site. A second cytological assessment was performed after a follow-up period of three to six months. Results. In total, 26 patients with oropharyngeal cancer, 13 with esophageal cancer, and one with esophageal infiltration of lung cancer underwent pull-through PEG placement with no immediate complications. Cytology following brushing of tubing and incision sites demonstrated malignant cells in 9 out of 40 cases, 22.5% of cases. Correlation analyses revealed a higher rate of malignant seeding in older patients and in those with higher tumor stages. 
had follow-up, cytology was undertaken in 32 out of 40 patients who had undergone pull-through PEG placement. Malignant cells were present in three on cytology, resulting in a metastatic seeding rate of 9.4%. Conclusion This study showed that malignant cells were present in 22.5% of patients immediately after pull-through PEG placement. Local metastases were verified at follow-up in 9.4%, all of which were from esophageal squamous cell carcinoma. This risk is particularly high in the older age group and in patients with higher tumour stages. Therefore, pull-through PEG placement should be avoided in these patients and direct access PEG favoured instead.